All right, also coming up, industry experts have suggested that a recently introduced windfall tax could help diversify Nigeria's economy, which has long relied heavily on its oil and gas sector. While this reliance has generated substantial revenues at times, it has also left the country vulnerable to the volatility of global oil prices. Experts note that with fluctuating oil market and a growing recognition of the finite nature of fossil fuels, there is an urgent need for Nigeria to diversify its economic base and reduce its dependence on a single industry. All right, I have uh, international finance and economic analyst now, Mukta Mohammed, joining me now to discuss all of these issues. Mukta, good morning to you. Good morning, Justin. All right. Before we get into the other tax matter, let's just take it off from, um, you know, that report we just talked about uh, fuel, the fuel issues and every other thing. Let's take it from there. Dangote Refinery, um, the NPC uh, said something not too long ago and he said that there are no guarantees of a lower price. You know, most Nigerians were, you know, thinking it, it is Uhuru because uh, there's been so much, so much talk and so much um, hope, you know, from Dangote coming on stream. But then NNPC is saying that there's no guarantee for a lower price. How do you react to that? Well, um, Justin, it's just because of um, government policies have not been really truthful to Nigeria. So uh, all Nigerians expect is uh, once there's a government policy, especially in the petroleum sector, because we we produce, we should be buying fuel at a lower rate. But that is supposed to be, um, uh, if you look at the oil producing nations of the world, interception from a uh, Libya, all other nation fuels are, are still very, very expensive. Now, um, why will we not be able to do that is because of our own exchange rate. You remember that, uh, again, the exchange rate is high uh, between the Naira and the dollar. So definitely, you don't buy crude in Naira, you buy in dollars. Even if uh, NNPC have promised that they will sell crude to Dangote in Naira, it will be by the exchange rate, uh, which has not been decided yet. And though even the president said that exchange will be fixed, it will not be like the willing buyer, willing seller rate. So we are waiting for that to come on stream. Oh. Now, when we think that there will not be price reduction, I, I, I tend to slightly disagree because, again, if you look at the cost of, um, of, of, of loading, you look at the cost of um, shipment, you look at um, some of the taxes that they will be paid, that will be paid by some of these um, importers, even the NPC when they import refined petroleum products to Nigeria that will be eliminated so but what i i believe we might not see a drastic reduction in price uh -huh. in the short term because we are supposed to uh, first of all we have to think of uh, uh, supply stability once there is supply stability you have more market player comes comes in uh -huh. then then that's when you begin to think of uh, uh, price reduction but i personally don't think we we'll get that immediate uh -huh. immediate huge price reduction but i think i still feel that we should get a price reduction unless the npc is telling us that uh, the current petroleum price, which is about eight um, in their own station, about 850, 55, and then, then the, um, other stations about uh, 800, almost almost 900. It's what is supposed to be um, if subsidy is removed. And because you are not uh, uh, um, um, refining from your country, that should be the price. Then I will agree. But for them to say, oh, we shouldn't expect. Um, a reduction in price. I don't think they, they have been economical with the truth. All right. Okay, well, let's just leave that and uh, go to what we are looking at today, which is um, the tax reforms. And um, uh, there's a whole lot of development. A lot of people are talking. Reactions have trailed, uh, you know, that um, story uh, over the weekend. And even uh, former um, Vice President Atiku Abubakar was also in the news concerning that. The proposed uh, uh, tax reforms, uh, they are proposing VAT to be moved uh, from 7.5 to 10 percent, although gradually other aspects uh, were mentioned uh, for personal income tax. And one, uh, one striking aspect of it was that uh, uh, the committee is looking at reducing our taxes uh, specifically from about um, uh, to about eight, because we have several different tax. But how possible is this? Let's start from there. The reduction of the number of taxes that we have, then we'll come talk about um, the VAT. What's your thought, Mukta? I, I think um, this is the only committee that seems to be pressing the right buttons. I mean, they seems to be doing thorough work and looking at uh, individuals, looking at businesses, looking at small businesses. This is one committee that has done really, really good work. 
Mm. But unfortunately, we have not seen um, the impact yet because it has to go through legislation, legislation processes. Mm. Now, you know, when it comes to legislation processes in this country, once it doesn't involve the legislators, or the, uh, it takes forever for us to get to. But if you involve them, we could just get those things passed within 24 hours. But I think this is a very, very um, um, good um, tax reform, and especially reduction in terms of um, taxes. Mm. If you go to some places, they pay bicycle tax, they pay television tax, they pay this tax, they pay that tax. We have about 31 different taxes or levies that people pay. Mm. If you can bring it to 8%, mm. that will be very, very good. And again, with the current Supreme Court judge that makes local government autonomous with their finances, and um, that same committee is proposing a 90% mm. uh, sharing formula for both local government and state, and the federal the government federal is having government, 10%. Yes. So I think that will be huge. Uh, hopefully, it will see the light of day. Then they will have the political will to implement yeah. it. And uh, political will is needed, especially when you come to a state like Lagos, where you see them um, harass small little business, dispatch rider, um, 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 the woman that has shops on the street, local government comes. So hopefully, if they are able to synergize together with the federal and the state government, yeah. that could be a game changer. All right, so okay, let's talk about the VAT. In as much as you have uh, welcomed this development, um, you know, reducing from about 36 to 8, I would just hope, like you have suggested too, that um, you know, this law or uh, to become law uh, as soon as um, possible. Uh, but then again, uh, controversy and reactions are trailing, and uh, gradual increase of um, VAT rate from 7.5 to 10 percent. Ultimately, uh, the committee is looking at um, 15 percent by 2030, and according to them, to lessen the impact on lower income individuals. How do you reason that? Look, I've said it over time that um, globally, global best practice in terms of tax is how to use tax to grow business rather than looking at tax to, to revenue like uh, the previous government have done, and even like this government is doing at the moment because uh, some of these reforms are not seen the light of day yet. Oh. Um, if you look at what they are saying, um, that value added tax, um, if you look at it uh, uh, critically, you realize that uh, smaller businesses are being exempted. Oh. Uh, food, household food items have been exempted. So definitely it will not bring more burdens to the already burden Nigeria. So rather, um, before the turnover was 15, 15, uh, 25 million, they have taken it up to turnover of 50 million before you can pay taxes. So they are looking at, because the key driver of Nigeria economy is the, is the SME, the, the, the informal sector, they are looking at not killing that sector, but making that sector uh, less burden and then reducing the cost of uh, some of the goods that comes from that sector. So we shouldn't just look at the seven, uh, the 10% in, in just one context of the fact that uh, it's going to cost more hardship. But when you look at it critically, it's not going to cost more hardship because you know, when food items are exempted, education items are exempted, accommodation are exempted, um, health also is exempted. So definitely, you are talking the bottom part of the of the businesses that do not do up to fifty oh. percent are exempted. So fifty million turnover are exempted. Then you also look at uh, those that will be charged. You talked about hotels, five stars hotels, not just even uh, just yeah. five stars hotels. So there's a lot they have done there. That that's why I say this is one of the best committee in terms of what okay. they have put in there. I, I, I don't think it will definitely kill businesses like we are about to shout about. Yeah. We have to look at it critically because um, the, the era whereby you use tax to just get end revenue is gone. We use tax to grow business. This is a tax policy that's about trying to grow business, trying to create expansion. Yeah. Because if you, if, if you reduce that tax burden, those money could be used also to do expansion. And the same people that are doing 50 million, 50 million turnovers, because of that expansion drive, they might be doing 100 million turnovers. And then in turn, mm. be able to pay tax to government, and government will get more revenue. So I, I just think this is one of uh, the best things that right. have been going on as far as economic policy, mm. especially in the area of tax is concerned. My only challenge is that uh, when you come up with this 10%, it definitely will, 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 will get to tax the more they already tax. So my whole challenge is that can we get more Nigerians into the tax bracket, especially the personal income tax bracket? Okay. Can we get some businesses that are doing above 50 million also back into the tax bracket? Those are things that need to be done. Again, they are not record signs, but people must be seeing 
people must see government to be using their money judiciously mm. so that then they will be encouraged to pay uh, taxes. All right. Uh, another aspect uh, before we talk about uh, the windfall tax is withholding tax. Uh, the committee is uh, proposing that small businesses with annual turnovers of 50 million or less be exempted from the um, WHT, um, WHT. Before now, it used to be about 25 million. I also understand before now, too, that um, even um, non governmental organizations and all of that, they don't pay withholding tax and all. So, what's, what, what's your position on this uh, new development on um, WHT? I think it's good uh, because um, this is very in Lagos. Uh, sometimes you pay some taxes by using uh, you use when you use all the uh, uh, food eateries, the particular taxes that you pay. So with this, that means you will not pay tax, especially yeah. on food items. So I think it's good when you take that withholding tax. But again, to make withholding tax very efficient, and then you you you, you create uh, more activities in the economy. And bringing more liquidity for especially in the informal sector that is the large driver of Nigerian economy. Then you also have to think about withholding that in terms of personal investment, personal income, or personal investment, because that's what is done so that a lot of Nigerians, instead of keeping liquidity in their hands, they will now begin to invest it because you are giving tax intense incentives. If you are saying that okay, if any 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 uh, 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 gain you gain through your investment window will not be taxed. Or unless it's this amount, and that will attract more Nigerians mm. to go into the investment space and then create um, reduce liquidity in the system and also be able to co cope inflation. So I think they, there's one area this committee has not looked at. Hopefully, um, in going forward, the tax reform is a continuous thing. So, hopefully, in going forward, they'll begin to look at that. Okay, as we round off now, let's look at another one. I know we have talked about windfall tax uh, before, but there, there seems to be so much more talk concerning it now. Uh, right now, people, uh, some opinion polls are saying that uh, withholding our uh, windfall tax can actually help diversify the, na the nation's economy, which has long been reliant on its oil and gas uh, uh, sector for sustenance. Do you agree? Well, I agree with windfall tax. Uh, again, but my own um, challenge with the windfall tax is that uh, you 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 came up with the policies. Yes, it favours some. It didn't favour some. So we shouldn't be. Well, if you look at the key drivers of Nigeria economy, the manufacturing sector, oh. the service sectors, those clusters that are driven by um, external forces like exchange rate, they lose. They're losing a huge, huge, huge loss losses are happening in this in the space. Uh, you see multinationals that are quitting jobs leaving Nigeria. What are we going to do with the windfall tax? We're only looking at um, uh, um, the financial sector. And again, it's a, it's, it's a law that has not been there. You don't just overnight set it up because you think that is available now. Some people have made windfall. That's based and based on, on your own administrative uh, 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 policies. But again, you are not looking at the impact that it has had on so many because they, the only impact you are seeing the windfall tax it's in the financial sector. You are not seeing it in the oil and gas sector. You are not seeing it in the manufacturing sector. You are not seeing it in the service sector, that's why the telecom space. So definitely, uh, it's not it's it's not something to be celebrated about now. You know that you are doing the win from taxes. How are you now giving incentive to other businesses that are suffering as a regard of some of these your policies that have that have happened? So that's where I have my challenge now. Now this win from taxes. Some of them are, are, are unreliable, are all reasonable income. That is, they are not reasonable, especially when you talk about um, uh, taxes that have to come from exchange rate. Some of these are just uh, paper tax, paper income, and they, they are not going to. So you need to look at that space and begin to look how much can you really get from these income taxes, especially some of these, uh, especially the banks have already paid you their own personal income tax and income uh, income tax. So where where is this coming from? Is this a matter of double taxation? And you are backdating it. You are backdating it and also moving it to 2025. So those are part of the things that uh, I think they really need to, to look at. And I'm happy that... Uh, up to this moment, the president have not signed that. Remember, the National Assembly have already passed it. Hmm. The president have not signed it into law. Maybe they are looking at areas to have um, to really, re really uh, maybe reject it or looking at some of those uh, gray areas to see how they can um, definitely make it um, business friendly. For me, windfall taxes are good. They could help build the uh, educational sector, health sector. But again, those are the any time there's an increment in one thing or the other. 
is oh we are going to put it in education we are going to put mm. it in health we are going to put it in infrastructure that has always been the slogan of every government but at the end of the day we see our education deteriorate we see our healthcare deteriorate we see our infrastructure deteriorate so some of the time this money does not do what they are meant to do rather they find their hands they find their way into the corrupt politicians and they use it to corruptly enrich themselves so that is why people are skeptical when it comes to this if you're going to have a win for tax and you have a clear cut project that this wave thought tax should be implemented I, I, and i and i said it with all due respect if you're saying okay this company you have a windfall tax of so 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 amount we want you to invest it this you in the financial sector through the cbn this is your windfall tax but this and this and this are the areas we want you to invest it in can you do that maybe that could could be the game changer rather than taking it to government sharing within the three tiers of government it doesn't give people it doesn't give people confidence and it doesn't bring the kind of result we expect with the kind of funding this 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 three tiers of government we have. So yes, I, I agree there's win for taxes, it's not in our law, we are introducing it fine. But what are the framework on the expenditure? Not just this vogue nature of oh uh -huh. we are using it for infrastructure, we are using it for education, we are using it for healthcare. Let's be specific. And can we drive this wind for trust through the private sector rather than taking it back to government coffer and you see those money with if you look at the private sector, they've been able to do some places in Lagos, you see corporate social responsibilities. And you see today one of the uh, good roads that we're enjoying in Lagos is from um, Apapa all the way to uh, to Bagada leading up to uh, uh, the, the former toll gate is driven by by tax uh, holiday given to Dangote as a result to build those roads. Mm. Why are we not looking at the windfall tax as a means of saying, you made so, 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 so amount of it, pick a project, PPP project, give yeah. it or um, maintain, and then let's take it from there. But when this money find themselves back to the government coffee, I am not confident. All right, uh, we just hope that uh, we actually put um, square pegs in square holes so that way we don't, um, you know, misappropriate things and do the wrong things. I must say a very big thank you to you, Mukta Mohammed, for your time on the show this morning. We do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.